hey, welcome to the show. We're looking at European pickup trucks. Now, that's something you don't hear of a lot, at least here in the States, right? We hear about pickup trucks all the time. I mean, it's, it's a lifestyle here. It, that is America. <laughs> in Mexico, in the United States, in Canada, we all love big trucks. Uh, but then we usually hear uh, in various places around the world, big trucks are just not a thing like they are here. But it doesn't mean there isn't any pickup trucks abroad, right? Now, of course, pickup trucks have uh, some amazingly practical purposes. So you're going to find trucks and vans and, uh, you know, work vehicles like this anywhere. So we're going to see some different European pickup trucks, see how they look, uh, see what's popular. And uh, it's fun for me because somehow you still get a lot of trucks that we don't get here in the U.S. I've definitely learned that with Australia. They have an amazing array of trucks that we don't get. So uh, let's take a look here. This is from a channel called Benjamin Osgunsberg. Uh, I'm probably saying that wrong. I do apologize, but this will be linked down below. Make sure to check out their channel. They look like a new channel, so make sure to check them out. Tell them IW Rockers sent you. And uh, this was suggested uh, on Discord by Benny's Welt 1988. So thank you for that suggestion. Let's take a look. Euro trucks. Okay, see, right off the bat, Mercedes-Benz X-Class. Whoa. That's actually a cool looking truck. It's weird, but in a good way. Uh, it is super cool for me. Some of you might be laughing like, oh, I see these every day. Uh, no, this uh, th I've never seen. I did not know Mercedes Benz made pickup trucks. I know they make big industrial trucks and big, you know, semi trucks. Uh, but seeing a pickup truck with a crew cab and a, and a bed here, yeah, that's pretty bizarre. Uh, kind of wish they sold those over here. Of course, we have a little annoying thing called the chicken tax here. So uh, that's why a lot of these trucks we don't get. If they're not made here, then to sell that truck here would be an insane amount of tax. And uh, it just wouldn't be worth it. So this is the tr first truck we miss out on. This is very interesting. Anyone have one of these? Anyone have driven one? How are these? <laughs> Very cool. Seeing Mercedes-Benz, you know, styling into a pickup. Look at that. Wow. Very interesting. Uh, Renault Alaskan. Whoa, I didn't know they made a pickup either. This is pretty jarring with the Renault design language. You know, they have that big iconic uh, logo or emblem up here. It's weird. It's a weird truck. I, I didn't picture them making pickup trucks. <laughs> Interesting. Is this a standalone truck or is this perhaps, you know, a sister truck to something else? Maybe they partnered with someone else and just reskinned it as uh, one of their own. I would love to hear about it. Uh, I, that actually goes for any of these. Very interesting. Uh, looks cool, though, from the back. I like the back. The front is a little bizarre for me. <laughs> Volkswagen Amarok. Now, this is a truck I have heard of. We don't get these here in the U.S., but I have seen a lot of these because, of course, uh, living on the border, we see them all the time crossover, and uh, I do know someone that has one of these, and uh, it's actually very cool. So this is the only one I recognize uh, in person. Now, of course, the ones I saw were must have been either like an off-road model or a base model. They looked very utilitarian. Whereas this uh, pictured one looks a little more dressed up. But uh, nonetheless, it does have that VW modern design language. I'm also wondering why it says Amarok uh, 2 with Roman numeral 2 here. What's that about? Is that like a different than the Amarok? I don't know. You want to weigh in what that means? I mean, it's actually an attractive truck. I, I actually kind of like it. <laughs> Another truck that we just miss out on. Now, we do get the Ranger. This looks slightly different, though. You know, it might have some design differences. And wow, <laughs> we don't get the Ranger Raptor. Why on earth the U.S. with perfect terrain for it? I don't know why in the hell we don't get the Ranger Raptor. That's a good one. I That is really like Ford USA. What the hell are you doing? So, yeah, I've heard that the rest of the world gets the Ranger Raptor. We don't. We get the F-150 Raptor, so that's cool. And I'm sure it's some sort of corporate BS, like, well, we don't want uh, people to buy this instead of the F-150 Raptor. I'm sure that's what it is. 
which uh, I think is kind of odd. But, but yeah, that is cool to see. This looks like a fun truck because this would be even more nimble than the bigger brother F-150. I think I'd take this. That would be neat. We have a Mazda BT-50. Whoa, it even has Mazda. Like, it totally looks like a Mazda in front. If you actually just... If you just picture the front here, it looks like the Mazda SUVs that we sell here. That is weird seeing that design language on a pickup. Ooh, it's interesting. It's um, not very truck-like, I'll say that. And that's not always a bad thing. It's kind of cool to have different designs. It looks the part back here, but up here it's kind of weird, I got to admit. I'm going to go off on a limb and say that one doesn't sell the best. But you guys can weigh in if you would like. Also, tell me which one of these you like the best. Or do you hate them all? Some people hate trucks for whatever reason. Uh, Isuzu D-Max. Now, this is cool. This is straight up cool. Fun fact, we used to sell tons of Isuzus here in the U.S. And I don't know when. Somewhere along the line, they stopped because we don't have any new Isuzus anymore. I would say it's been at least 10 or 15 years. I would say around 2005 to 2010 era where we stopped selling them here. I don't know why they stopped. Also, is this image messed up where it has like the same grill thing twice? That's either a, a messed up image where it's like double layered or that's how it really is, which in, in case, in that case, that's kind of funny. Um, I could probably do without that. Other than that, I think it's a really cool looking truck. I also watch a lot of in my, my off time off camera. Um, I watch a lot of Australian off-roading shows and uh, the Zuzu D-Max is in almost every episode, I think it's fairly popular down there. And uh, seems like it's pretty capable, too. I like the back of it. I, it's a good-looking truck. I like it all around. It is pretty pretty neat, actually. What is this? A Sang Sang? No, a Sang Yang Muso? What on earth? Is this... Uh, I'm going to guess it's either Korean or Chinese. I've never I don't think it's Japanese. Uh so I'm I'm going to throw a guess there. That is very bizarre. Again, not as, you know, kind of like broad and tough truck like, kind of like the Mazda. It's a little softer looking. Uh which that's okay, you know, some people prefer that. It is uh I don't know, it's weird never heard of that one at all that is definitely a truck we don't get here look at that whoa it's kind of quirky i don't know i i it's definitely not my favorite and is it a real body on frame i mean this almost looks like a uh like this bed is like it's all one body it doesn't actually look like a real bed that you attach and detach right i wonder if this is a uh, unibody in that case i really don't like it <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting like Honda Ridgeline vibes from that. Fiat Fullback. Oh my God, I love the name. <laughs> what on earth? I didn't know that Fiat made uh, pickup trucks. Whoa. Look at that. Kind of like bland styling, but it works. You know, it works better than some of the other ones, like the last truck, I guess. So, it, yeah, like safe styling, not crazy, you know, but not like straight up ugly. It's just all right. And very, it, it's a little funky back here with this, this bed line. Again, is this body on frame? Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. It's interesting. I love the name though. Look at that. That's a weird looking vehicle. I kind of like it. I do tend to like odd, peculiar looking vehicles. This is just weird enough where I, I actually do like it, even though I don't think it's, I wouldn't say this is the most practical or like workhorse status of all the trucks seen here. I don't think, I don't think this would be your best choice, but I, for some reason, like it. <laughs> is that it? Oh, that's it. Dang it. I, ooh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with my favorite out of all these. Uh, I, I, you know, this would be the easy pick, the Ranger Raptor, or I'm sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, the Ranger Raptor would be awesome. Uh, that would be a given, although, you know, that is probably not as common and, uh, it's probably expensive. So in, in that case for practicality, 
and you know everything else. That wouldn't be my top pick. I think my top pick, believe it or not, would be this. Mer- Ooh, should I? Should I pick this? I do like this Mercedes, although I don't know anything about it. It's either with Mercedes, I, I'm willing to bet it's either really good or it's really bad. I feel like there's no in between. I feel like they make really awesome cars, or some of their cars are just total flops. I'll, I'll pick it. And you guys can roast me in the comments if that's the wrong choice. <laughs> and check it out. Uh, when I type in Mercedes X-Class, I mean, look at this. This is awesome. Look at this 6x6. Six six. <laughs> it's you got to admit, it's pretty cool. I don't know what their uh, reputation's like. If this is a common truck or a good work truck, I don't know. But I'm loving these custom ones. Uh, these things look real good. Look at that one. That one wins. I love, like, trophy... Trophy truck, a Baja truck looking desert desert runners like this. And uh, that has this vibe big time. There's like, you know, a stock one. I don't know. I like it. What's the interior look like? I mean, I love that I'm seeing a manual transmission. I love that. Those have somehow almost gone by the wayside completely here in the States. You used to be able to get any truck in a manual. There was a lot of them. Uh, you know, and it's just gone by the wayside anymore, and it's very sad. I hate to see it, uh, but seeing a stick shift in this, that's really great. Look at that one. I mean, that is sleek, and I love, like, totally stripped out work vehicles with steelies and stuff. Like, this is cool. That's what I would go for. I wouldn't even go for the jazzed up ones. I'd go for this. I like that base model. I love it. There is another one. Ooh, I really like the base model. I don't know why I love how, you know, like industrial it looks. Like it's just made for work. There's no BS. This thing's going to be reliable, easy, right? Oh, I like it a lot. And then I also like this too. <laughs> Those are kind of two extremes though, aren't they? Well, I would like to build upon this. Uh, this was an intro into Euro Trucks. Um you know, I've been covering Euro big trucks like, uh, you know, big off-road kind of military style trucks when we're talking about like Mercedes Unimogs, you know, Tatra, Phoenix, 8x8s, things like that. Uh, I'm still learning about stuff like those and I'm really loving those because they're the ultimate badass vehicle. Let's get real. And then, of course, I'm having a blast learning about Euro um semi trucks, like industrial trucks. So, you know, your Scania's and your Volvo's. Uh, your MANs, your DOFs, your Mercedes-Benz semi-trucks, uh, you know, and the list goes on. Those are awesome. I'm loving those. I have tons of viral videos on those. If you haven't seen them, uh, you know, definitely check them out. That is really fun. So now this has trickled down to just pickup trucks that the common man can buy uh, for work around the property, around the farm, contractor work, tradesman work, whatever, uh, you know, Trucks have their purpose, and I realize it's a different truck culture in different parts of the world, especially Europe compared to the U.S., uh, but I still feel like uh, clearly there's a need for them because uh, in some capacity, they're still present. I will build upon this. I would love uh, your ideas and suggestions of anything you have to request uh, you know, to add to this series about you know a big American truck guy here learning and uh, looking into truck culture in Europe. I think that would be very interesting. I also pose a couple questions to you. Uh, again, what's your favorite truck that was featured here or maybe one that wasn't featured here? Please tell me about it. And finally, on the flip side of this, the American trucks, like the big full-size trucks, uh, you know, like Ford F-150s or even the heavy duties, like F-2, F-350s, no Ram trucks, Ram 1500s, Ram Rebels, Ram Power Wagons. Are those present in Europe at all, even if it's minuscule? Chevy GMC, uh, you know, like a Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, are those present in Europe? Granted, it'd be a nightmare on a lot of the roads, I'm sure, but are they present in any capacity? That would be my question. Anywho, I can't wait to see in the comments. This is going to be a good video for that. I can't wait to learn more. This was kind of a fun, lighthearted intro here to Trucks in Europe. Throw a like under if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be part of this amazing community. My name is Ian. You watch the 9W Rocker. And until next time, guys, catch you later.